So, we're now in about 2002, and there is no gaming TV on terrestrial television. Zip nada. Gaming TV had always been somewhat distrusted by the big telebods anyway, games being something that took kids' eyes away from the channels, away from the ads, away from the money. Still, that hadn't stopped the success of shows like Games Master in the 16-bit era and what have you. But the PlayStation had, on the whole, been quite bad for games TV. It was an entirely different audience to try and appease, and ultimately, while a couple of the efforts came close, they'd fallen a bit flat, and in 2002, the big channels just weren't interested in sticking games on television. So what happens to formats like this? Well, they go digital. With so many channels out there desperate for content, just about anything can find a home somewhere, surely. And so we have quite a few shows to cover here. Most of them aren't that great, I'll be honest. But I'm sure most of you will be familiar with at least one of them along the way, so without further ado, let's just go for it. First off, we do have one more show that actually did go on terrestrial TV to look at, Cybernet. I've left it until now because it kind of provides a template for whatever constitutes gaming TV these days, and also honestly because it's far too generic to be worthy of a video of its own. Cybernet didn't even really have a host to speak of. It linked reviews, previews and features together with a CG robot and an announcer, most famously the voice of Lucy Longhurst. We're blasting, skating and screaming our way onto your screens this week with another packed Cybernet and me Lucy Longhurst. There's not much beyond that to say about the show, as the whole thing is just... game stuff. No skits or anything like that, no real attempts at humour, and at least no one telling you that you're a fucking sad asshole. The reviews are pretty much just press releases read out over footage and an arbitrary score on the end. Is it good? Is it bad? Honestly, it's not really anything. Just filler. Still, in the days when you were starved for games TV, it'd be something at least, if you were up late enough to watch it. Cybernet was dead of night programming, usually airing on ITV at around 2 in the morning, even later than in bed with me dinner, sharing space with, well, a whole load of random shows. It'd be on sometime after God's Gift or The Chart Show, just before catching another rerun of Prisoner Cell Block H or Collapse into Night Scream. Late Night Graveyard TV was a very curious thing. Still, it was also a fairly safe slot. In fact, Cybernet is probably one of the longest one in games TV shows ever. In some form or another, the show ran for 14 years, from 1995 until 2009, shown in a fair few countries to boot. I think it disappeared from British TV sometime around the mid noughties along with most of what could be described as late night TV. Basically, channels like ITV figured out that it was a lot cheaper and a lot more lucrative to fill the wee small hours with rather shady phoning quiz shows, roulette and the like. Late night TV, such as it was back then, is completely not a thing now. Kind of a shame. The influence of Cybernet can be seen nowadays in shows that are basically the same, like Player, which can be found kicking around on various digital channels here and there. It's the same sort of deal, and as far as format goes, I've already said everything I'm going to say. Next up? Well, I guess if there was a main event show to look at in this video, it would probably be Gamesville, Sky's sort of replacement for Gamesworld. I mean, at least it was on Sky 1, one of the biggest digital channels around. We're now in 2003, and the PS2 era is fully in swing, and again it's time for another change in format. Gamesville is, I guess, a kind of mixture of the two we've already seen. It has the media twatitude of bits, fun bandits and the like, but it's not on in a later slot. Gamesville was a lunchtime show, aimed at teenagers, mostly airing on Saturday lunchtimes, I believe, and probably sandwiched in between WWE superstars or Velocity or whatever. We're in a studio now with a live audience, basically the show's production team, and we've actually got challengers back again, or face-offs as they're called now. The reviews are all kind of same as usual, just tossed off, although I guess they're a bit different now seeing as you get PS2 titles and even a look at some rather early mobile phone games. Yeah. One of the many troubles with Gamesville is that it never actually seems to have much when it came to the actual cutting edge of gaming. And that was, well, one of many problems. Let's be blunt, Gamesville was shit, and by a safe distance the worst show we've covered so far. There's a whole load of reasons for this. First up, the tone of the show is just something else. It's all just so pandering. 
Jamie and Darren, our hosts, just don't ever come off well at all. In the wonderful episode that's up on YouTube, and that should probably tell you something, the production team takes over from them and, quite frankly, they upstage them. To be seriously unkind, they basically come off as media pricks who don't believe a single word they're saying. The show uses words like gnarly and hardcore and whatever that only ever get used by twats like me these days. And there's still the old Fun Bandits undercurrent where anyone who actually cared all that much about games wasn't all that welcome. And there's kind of a feeling like, well, why was this show even made? Gamesville goes for a different audience, 13 to 15 year olds and what have you, but truth is, it's not like the main gaming audience was getting any younger at the time. The show's challenges, tips and so on felt hilariously out of touch, like something that would have been made in about 1995 or so. Maybe I'd feel different if I was a bit younger and perhaps had some nostalgia for it, but I was 18 in 2003 so this was just kinda shit. The thing about bad TV aimed at young people is that it truly feels like a pathetic, wanking middle-aged executive in a suit shouting, This is what you like, right, eh? This is what your kids like, isn't it? You know that Steve Buscemi picture, you know, Lee, how are your fellow kids thing? Basically that. And I can't think of all that many better examples of this than Gainesville. Even the name, that Tacton Z or Z or whatever, ugh, God, sends a shiver right down your spine, so it does. Honestly, I wasn't alone. Pretty much everyone hated Gamesville, and the show was received almost wholly negatively. It even received some rather damning notices from the forefathers of Games TV. No lesser person than Dominic Diamond described it as the equivalent to eating your own shit. The hosting abilities of Jamie and Darren also came in for school. Seen largely as a prophetic attempt by Sky to make the show street, because it had a couple of presenters saying BRAV all the time and what have you. Yeah, people basically utterly hated the show and it's pretty easy to see why. In the end it only lasted from 2003 until 2004, taken in two series before not returning. It was not missed, and as it goes you can barely find any footage of the show on the tubes at all. Honestly, that's probably for the best. Ugh, jeez, let's go somewhere different. Another digital channel that tried to do a bunch of games TV was Bravo. Bravo was an odd channel. Starting out for most in the 90s with a load of old cult programming and the like, it gradually switched focus. Back in the late 90s it's kind of notable as the only place where people in England could watch ECW. By this time, about 2003, the channel had become quite a laddish affair. Lots of sports, lots of documentaries like um, Danny Dyer's Real Football Factories. And of course, some programmes about games. So how are these fair? Well we have two to look at. First up we have Gamepad, which aired on the channel between 2001 and 2004 and was hosted by a face from the past. Hello, I'm Fuck yeah, it's Berlin. Violet You're Berlin! The show pitched itself as being by gamers and for gamers, a big claim to make, but well how did it fare? Sad thing is that there's not a whole lot of footage available of the show on YouTube, but from what there is, and from my own personal memories of the show, yeah it was alright actually. It's Violet Berlin for a start and Violet Berlin was always good. I actually believe the by gamers and so on stuff because the show isn't as utterly in your face as the shows we've covered lately have been, that attitude just isn't there. Hell, Violet Berlin still kinda has the same demeanour she has back in her bad influence days mostly, even if it's not exactly aimed at children now. It's a nice, good enough show. To be honest, the most annoying thing about the whole show is that early naughty style entirely white background setting that makes every show that used it look like it came from the fucking Christian networks. Ugh, shit just hurts my eyes. But yeah, this show was fine. Gamepad lasted for three years, a decent one for a digital TV network, but then Bravo decided to take something of a different tack. They still wanted a game show and wanted to take some of the things that worked about Gamepad, but with a different touch as the channel got laddier and laddier. One thing they did still want was a familiar host. So who would it be? Bob Mills? The Games Animal? Jamie and Darren off Gamesville? <laughs> nah nah nah, Bravo went for the big one. Dominic Diamond himself. More than that, Dominic would be accompanied by Games Master's old producer, Johnny Finch. The result? An alternative gaming show called When Games Attack, which would run for 20 episodes between 2004 and 2005. Now the words alternative game show might strike fear into the hearts of those who remember Fun Bandits all too well, but 
well, look who's hosted it. There's a difference. This show was actually really quite bloody good indeed. I actually seem to remember the show getting a bit of a mixed reaction in the day, perhaps from those who expected something a lot more like Games Master and didn't quite get it, but looking back on it, the show was fine. Dominic himself probably has quite a lot to do with that. He's as good as ever. He has no trouble bringing back the old double on Tondras and what have you. He is perhaps a bit less abrasive than he eventually got in the final couple of series of Games Master, and the content is quite cool too. Less of a focus on getting all the hottest previews and what have you, more stuff like classic looks back at things like Earthworm Jim, plus the odd silly little feature here and there where Dom and someone from the production team try to do a game in real life, so to speak. It was a different sort of thing, a kind of magazine-esque show, and ultimately it only really ended up being slightly different than a lot of the pack that surrounded it, but it was still perfectly decent fun. Compared to a lot of the other shows here, it's bloody gold. Bravo weren't the only channel with older faces though. There's also this somewhat generic Cybernet-esque program called Ultimate Gamer, which I think aired on Sci-Fi around 2003 and featured the talents of X-Bits host Emily Newton Dunn. And yeah, that's probably the only interesting thing about it. Up next, well, here's um, Gamers, Gatmers. Uh, basically, it's Gamers only with an at sign because, I don't know, internet. This show aired in the mid noughties on Rapture TV, a rather small channel that operated out of Norfolk that mostly dealt with rave culture, extreme sports and things like that. Yeah, you kind of see how far down the barrel we're going here. Uh, one of the hosts is Matt Cuttle, who was previously involved with Gamesville, which should kind of be a warning sign. On the whole, this is um, quite a bad and cheap show, filled with a ragtag mishmash of the various problems we've seen so far. The main issue being that on the whole, it doesn't seem like anyone here actually knows all that much about video games. There were people occasionally brought in who did know a fair bit about games, but the main folks behind the show, the channel themselves, um, probably just wanted a gaming show because, well, it was something to do, wasn't it? I keep harping on about this sort of thing to the point of exhaustion, but if you're watching something where people are going to give their opinions on something, you should kind of expect some basic knowledge or enthusiasm at the very least, and so much games TV doesn't even have that. So much of this only ever seems to go on about a few games, almost as if you can judge the quality of a show by how much they casually yammer on about Grand Bloody Turismo. I kind of feel bad because it is such a cheap show, I mean Rapture TV was the poor man's bravo, but in those days it was easy to get salty and the convoluted history of the show itself and its channel, originally appearing on Rapture TV around 2000, cancelled around 2001, the channel itself died around the same time but was then brought up and revived around 2004, with Gatmas returning soon after, Matt Cuttle providing the major presenting link between both incarnations of the show before everything ended up dying again and again and again, is much much more interesting than what was actually on the show. To be honest, we've probably gone as low as we can get when it comes to single programmes with this one. But wait, there's something else. How about another approach? Digital TV meant that you could have special interest channels for all sorts of things. Seriously, screw stuff like Rapture, you had the Wrestling Channel, Extreme Sports, Wine Television, the Caravan Channel. So what about a channel entirely devoted to video games? Would that work? And as it turns out, there were a couple. The first one was Game Network and... Well, from what I can see here on YouTube, or what I can remind myself of, it was quite weird indeed. A odd mix of programming, mostly one from Italy, with some very small programs and a chat room that folks could text into throughout. I say shows, I mean, seriously, they would just consist of a show called Game Guru, where people sent in requests for tips and the like, and the guy hosting on webcam would find the answers. Sort of like a middleman between the viewer and game FAQs. Wait a minute, that guy, he's kind of familiar. Yes, Guru Larry was involved here. A lot of the shows are like this, very simple green screen stuff, mostly just background for the chat. There are even things like extended clips from games set to music, or even just screenshots. Toss odd, but it's really not something I'd like to knock, because a lot of this rather kooky special interest stuff doesn't exist on digital now, and I kind of miss it. Game Network is the sort of channel that it's good to go to sleep to, if you know what I mean. It's um, good free in the morning stuff, and I really do miss that on British television these days, because it just doesn't exist, unless you want to watch tarot readings or something. 
A slightly bigger attempt would arrive around 2006 or so. A channel called xleague.tv. This channel actually had proper backing behind it and all sorts. It was an attempt to bring eSports to television, with proper gaming content across the board. There's quite a few different shows here, so let's quickly run through some of them. X-League's flagship was naturally The Match, which was just out-and-out out eSports and consisted of games like FIFA, Counter-Strike, Halo and what have you. It's eSports, either you like it or you don't. I personally have no interest at all in eSports, so I never used to tune into that. My favourite show on the channel was always Games Night, simply an hour-long show where people would sit and talk about various current gaming topics and games and the like. And then of course you had all of Guru Larry's stuff. Him who was once on Games World and other programs, him who was just on the webcam, him who you just saw helping out a bit on Gatmas. If you didn't know already, he absolutely did a fuck ton in games television and for games television. There was Guru Larry's Retro Corner, a bit of gabbing about old games, of course, Wes and Larry's Top 10, what it says on the tin, quite good, and Review Mageddon, which finally stuck the venerable pairing of Wes and Larry on camera and gave them a review show for the latest games, which was pretty much what they were best at. And he came up with Games Night 2 as well as a big chunk of pretty much all the channel's programming that wasn't the match. At the time, I used to watch X-League quite a lot. Not all of the stuff was great by any means, but it was the sort of thing that you just wouldn't see on anything bigger. But the trouble with all these nascent, special interest digital channels was that, well, before too long things would start going wrong. Sometime around 2008, X-League got rebranded as Pulse, and sometime after that they just stopped producing any new content, more and more stuff that wasn't games seeped in, and the channel eventually just disappeared from Sky completely one day. That's my overview of it all anyway, as a fan. Truth be told, X-League was in many ways a cut above the rest of the stuff we've seen in this video. A serious, ambitious project that had backing and had serious effort and passion put into it. This little paragraph isn't going to come close to doing all of it justice. So what can we do about that? Hmm. Watch this space. For now though, I think it's time to draw a line on this overview. There's other shows I could have mentioned perhaps, but yeah, it's going on a bit long and covering the same old ground. But it's not quite over yet. There's one other show I need to cover. One last kick and scream from gaming TV. Something that links games TV right up to the internet. And also happens to be my favourite gaming show of them all. The one that, if it had never existed, would probably have never got me thinking to produce my own stuff. And like the other great show that we covered, it has a distinctly Scottish hue about it. Finally, in the final episode of this series, it's time to look at Rab and Ryan, meaning not just their BBC Scotland series, Video Gaiden, but the internet web series that kick things off for them, Consolvania. And we'll all be there in your next episode, Barry Burtons. See you then!